Some time ago, I made a review of the Cold Steel SRK in SK5 Steel. That knife had been loaned to me by my friend Derek Croft, who had bought, purchased it new. And uh, I've since purchased that knife because, of course, I beat it pretty hard during the review and testing phase, and I figured it was only fair I buy it from him. Well, since that time, Derek has purchased another Cold Steel SRK, but this one is in 3V. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on this, keep watching. All right, just before we get started, I'm not going to do a full-on complete review of the Cold Steel SRK in 3V Steel because um, it's almost identical in every way to the original, and it really doesn't make a lot of sense to do a full-on review. But what I did want to do is do a comparison between the original in SK5 Carbon Steel and this new one in the 3V stainless steel, just to see how much of a difference there is between the two steels. Because, of course, if you're looking to purchase one of these, you got to know that the 3V version is three times the price of the SK5 version. And I wanted to know for myself, is it worth the extra money? Well, there are a few other things about it that make it kind of attractive. So what I thought I would do is just bring the camera in a little closer. I'm going to show you the two knives side by side. I'll give you the barest of information on each of them, because if you want to know more, then go back and watch my review on the SK-5. Then what we're going to do is we're going to do some pretty hard use testing to see how the steels stack up. All right, what I thought I would do is just give you a few close-ups of the 3V version of the SRK and the measurement at the same time which of course will be listed in the video description below so overall length 10 and 3 quarters inches with a 6 inch blade length 3 16 inch thick steel and 8.2 ounces now I'll bring in the other knife the original SRK in SK5 carbon steel and talk about what uh, or just maybe summarize some of my thoughts from the original video so one of the things I was looking to determine when I tested this for that original video, is whether or not this would be a make up a good bushcraft knife. And honestly, I don't see it as a bushcraft knife. It may be as a survival knife that can do bushcraft tasks. Now, the other thing I mentioned at that time was, yes, it should be and probably is best classified as a survival knife. But at the same time, I was a little concerned about the tip strength on it and the reason is is because it's in a hollow grind now i know a lot of people commented to me that the original version was in full saber and i appreciate that but the current versions in sk5 steel is in hollow grind and what happens when you do that in hollow grind when you come out to the tip you make for a very very thin tip great for stabbing actually not too bad at all for carving but if you're going to be prying with this at all, something I wouldn't recommend with necessarily just about any knife, uh, you know, I just, I worry that the tip is going to break off. I didn't put it through that kind of heavy use because at that time it wasn't my knife and I didn't want a chance breaking the tip off of someone else's knife. So those are the thoughts I had for the original. Now I'm going to bring the SK-5 in because there are some significant differences between the two. Okay, so here is the SK-5 version. Now, I know, first off, it's uncoated. Well, it's uncoated because it's stainless steel, and it certainly looks more attractive. You see less wear and tear on this knife, even though I have been using it for a little while. But there's a few things to note. SK-5 steel is considered one of the very best steels for outdoor knives, and the reason being is that it has extreme toughness, meaning it can take a lot of pounding, and it has good hard edge holding as well, or good edge holding as well. So those are the balance between the two things. Sometimes you can make a knife that has great edge holding, but it's kind of brittle at the same time. So, you know, this is a, considered a good steel for the balance between the two. Probably a much better steel than even the SK-5 is. Now, of course, that premium steel does come as a cost, as I mentioned, three times the cost of the original knife. But that's not the only difference between the two. Dimensions and everything are the same, but there's a few other differences that really make this one stand out. Start with, it's not hollow ground. That is a proper saber grind from there on down. That makes all the difference. You can actually feel it. If you hold the two knives tip to tip, you can feel the difference in thickness. Now, it still looks like a thin tip, I know, and it still is a relatively thin tip, but it is much stronger right through here where you need that strength than the original SK-5 is. Quite impressive, in fact. Yeah, I, I don't know why this couldn't be done on the original. I think it would just up the standards of the original back to where they should have been or were back in the day. 
few other things, though, I noticed. Now, to start with, both of these are made in Taiwan. This is not an upgrade made in the U.S., so it's still made in Taiwan. That's not necessarily a negative. It's just that most people want to know where is it made. This one is made in Taiwan. But here's the other thing I noticed. That is almost the edge on that, almost able to cut myself with. That's how sharp that is right there. It is just great for scraping or whatever else you need to do with a sharp edge on it. And if you think that is sharp, the swedge is, if I run my finger down it, I actually think I might cut myself. You know, if I ran that down a ceramic rod, I wouldn't even have to put it to a stone. This would be double-edged from here on out. That's how precise that was done. There is just that upgrade in the fit and finish of the SK-5 in 3V steel that, you know, it, it and that's as it should be. If you're paying three times the cost for this knife, you want not just a better steel, but you'd like to have a knife that's better built. It's not that there's anything wrong with the fit and finish on the original. This is just a step up. All right, so let's talk about how we're going to do the testing. All right, as far as testing goes, I'm not going to go through all the same tests I would with any other knife for a review. I won't be doing any batoning through pieces of wood. I won't be do, making any tent pegs, putting the notches in or putting the point on, and I won't be doing any feather sticking. The performance of these, ta these two knives are very, very close because of the design. They are very, very close. I will tell you, however, though, the SK-5 version in hollow grind is a little bit slower. Slicier. Not much, but it just a little bit slicier going through a piece of wood. Uh, that's okay. I would sooner have the saber grind that the one comes in 3V because it's going to uh, lead to a prop or a stronger tip. And that's one of the things, I, as I mentioned, I was concerned about. So how am I going to test these? Well, what I'm trying to do with these two knives is just test the steel. That's all I'm looking for is just test the steel to see if it's actually worth three times the price for the 3V over the SK-5 version. And I wanted to make this a real test. Now, how do you do a real test when you're out in the woods? Well, what I thought I would do is it's still artificial because it's not doing all the tasks I would do every day with a knife. And it is heavy use for a knife. But it is, I think, a bit more realistically than cutting, just cutting rope at home. I'm actually going to go to where I know there is a newly downed oak tree. And I'm going to chop into this oak tree using a baton, cross-grain chopping, which can be really tough on an edge, until we see which one dulls first. I don't know how else to tell, test the edges. I mean, I, I could go on slicing cardboard forever, but I wanted to do something out here in the woods. So once again, I'm going to take it to, to a log and just baton it into that long, creating a wedge as if I was trying to get through it. Maybe, you know, I could stretch the realism to say I needed to build a shelter and this is the, this is the way I'm cutting my uh, wood down to make shelter building materials. Not the size of this log. It's 8 or 10 inches in diameter. But you know, I think you'll get the point. It's all about cross-grain batoning through a really hard wood oak. So that's what I'll do. Now, I'm going to do a before and after test by slicing a piece of paper. How else am I going to measure edge sharpness? And I know a bit artificial. It's not to see how sharp a knife can get. It's to see how long it will stay sharp. So I'll do an initial test with each of these knives. And I will tell you, there I hone them up before I come out because I do maintain my edges on all my knives. And then I'll baton for a while through the wood. And then I'll test the edge again on a piece of paper. And as soon as I see one dulling, then I'll just work on the better steel presumably the 3V, and see just how long it takes to dull that edge. Again, all we're doing is comparing steel to steel. All right, let's get started. All right, well, this is definitely a new test for me. I've not done anything quite like this for, uh, I guess, for obvious reasons. I don't use knives like this. I've used the large choppers to do this type of test, but just for an endurance test between steels, no. All right, piece of paper. SK-5 version of the CRK, or SRK, yeah, okay, <laughs> no problems there at all. We don't need to repeat that again and again and again. Let me put that piece of paper away and grab my impromptu off of the ground baton. And all I'm going to do is start with, let's say, I'll do 10 at a time batons. I'll be going in trying to create a wedge here as if I'm trying to go right through the whole log. Then I'll check the edge, and if I think it's dulled some, we'll do go back to the paper test. So let's give it a go. Maybe I'll, uh, I'm not sure yet, but I might just speed this portion up on the video. Let's see. Uh, 
I think that's 10. I'm not sure I didn't uh, count as accurately. No, nope, nothing yet. No surprise. Well, SK5 is good steel. Very tough. Not known for its edge holding, but known for its toughness. So let's get a couple more. I think I'm going to wear out before the edge does. All right, keep going. Maybe I'll come around the edge of the log a little bit. Maybe, yeah, I'll be back. Got to go look for another baton. All right, sorry about that. I had to go back, find my saw, find a branch that I could cut off of something. Actually, it's a branch off the far end of this tree that was, well, there you go. Can you see it? good hard oak and heavy so it's not down that long i think it was probably a, a winter windfall so still in really good shape all right let's pick up if we can i put my gloves on because the shock was starting to get me both in the baton and in the uh, handle oh i can do that harder though ah. oh. all right i really regret calling this a realistic test. I certainly wouldn't be taking big, uh, big trees like this down with a knife. I'm not getting any rolls. But let's try the paper test on it because uh, I think long before these edges wear out, I'm gonna wear out. All right, did you keep your edge? <laughs> okay, I guess my work is cut out for me. This is the SK Vive version. This is the original carbon steel, and I am batoning through hard, strong oak, and I'm not doing anything to the edge. I'm beginning to think this may not have been the right test after all. Maybe something along the lines of a uh, uh, rope test, but I try to keep it real, I'm trying to keep it real here. All right, let's go maybe a few more. No, I don't think it is. Not even, oh, okay, yeah, here we go. Little bit out here. I'm starting to feel a little bit less of a grab. A little further and we'll test it. I'm getting so far into this log, I may have to start another space next to it or something. Maybe. All right. Get the paper out. I hope it's dulling. <laughs> no, not really. I'm, I'm actually very impressed with how well the edge is holding. I'm just would like it to be. Oh, yeah, here we go. All right, there's significant. I won't call it edge damage. Let's just actually look and see. You know, I can't see it. There's no glints off of the steel. But the paper don't lie. Oh goodness, now it's time to try it with the 3V steel. All right, give me a second. Okay, before I start beating the tree up again, let's see how the 3V steel does. My paper's getting all wrinkly. Oh, that's not a good way of doing it. Let's try this. You know, like butter. Yeah, okay, so <laughs> may have to go to a new piece of paper that's not so wrinkled. But definitely this one is sharp. Okay. I'm going to start another notch right next to the original and go there. All right. Maybe something like this. I think that's still in frame. Yep.
you can know I've, I've definitely lost count. So all I'm going to be able to do is estimate maybe by the amount of uh, cuts into the tree if I've done close to the same amount of cut, chopping. Definitely hogging out some wood. Cross grain at an angle. Not much harder than this on an edge. All right, edge test. Geez, did I even cut anything? I almost think it's sharper. Of course it can't be, but I'm thinking there's absolutely no change in the edge at all. Nope, nothing, okay. Whew. All right, we'll go a little further. Okay, another edge test. Nothing, nothing. Oh, this is going to take a while. Okay, the cut I'm doing with 3V is already bigger, wider, deeper than the one I did with SK5. And already, it's showing itself to be a much better edge keeper. I don't think there's anything. All right, one more set of wax with this. I'm gonna put it to the paper. Uh, if I don't see any edge difference at all, I'm gonna call this test. Already, uh, I know that the 3V is outdoing the SK5 and uh, I just won't be able to go, personally, I won't be able to go until I see serious edge damage to this. Okay, a little bit more. Where's my paper? Oh, maybe, maybe. Of course, now I'm finding, trying to find a good piece of edge, edge of paper to. Oh my goodness, look, geez. What does it take to dull this? Nope. I'm whittling the finest of edges off of that piece of paper. Okay, uh, I've seen enough. Hopefully you have. Let's see if we can wrap this video up. All right, that was a workout to say the least. And I don't know that I've got the clearest of winners on this. Well, I do have a clear winner, but it's just not to the criteria that I was looking for. So first, the Cold Steel SRK in the original SK5 carbon steel. It actually did better than I expected it to do. Now, that shouldn't surprise me because it is a good steel. It is well heat treated. It's been around for a long time, uh, but it did dull. There's no damage, no rolling, certainly no chipping, but it did dull some. So it didn't last as long as the other steel we'll talk about in a minute. Still, uh, I'm very impressed with it. Now, I still have my reservations about tip strength on this, but if you're not prying this or stabbing this into wood and prying with it, then you really should not feel that you're hampered at all by having the less expensive version in SK5 steel. All right, how about the other one? So this is the first knife that I have tested in 3V steel, and I am so, so impressed with this. There is no appreciable difference in the edge from beginning to end, and that was a lot of chopping. I did more with this than I did with the other version in SK5 steel, and this has just held up very, very well. 
You know, there is a downside to that, though, you need to be aware of. If you're going to make the investment at three times the price to get this, without question, you're going to get a knife with an edge that lasts very, very long. But what about putting the edge back on again if it does dull on you? So that's something to consider. The SK5 steel may not last as long in its edge, but you're going to find it a lot easier to put an edge back on. So word of advice here is uh, don't let your knife get dull. Learn how to sharpen a knife or learn how to maintain a sharp edge through a ceramic rod and stropping, just honing and stropping. Keep that edge sharp and you can go a long time between sharpenings if you do that. But if you let either get dull, it takes more work. If you let the 3V get dull, it's going to take a lot more work to get it back to an edge. Yeah, honestly, I don't see, cannot feel anything. And of course, it demonstrated that through the paper. It was still gliding through the paper as if I had just taken it to the paper for the very first time. However, having said that, is it worth three times the price to buy this knife over the original? Wow. If you have the budget for it, yes. Unequivocally, yes. If you have the budget for it. Is the other knife garbage? Far from it. It's a cold steel SRK. It's going to serve you very well. But in addition to steel that's going to last a lot longer in terms of sharpness, oh, by the way, and rust resistant, uh, not maybe as much as some stainless steels, but still very rust resistant. That's why the other one is coated. You also get the uh, fact that it's a real saber grind and not a hollow grind, meaning you should get the tip strength that comes along with that. Would I like to own this? Yeah, I certainly would. I don't want to pay the pr price for it though. That's the, that's the only thing. And that's entirely up to the buyer. If they feel they have the budget for the better steel, then this is worth the money. If you don't have the budget for this, no problem. Go with the regular SRK. If that's the knife of your choice, just be prepared to put a little bit more time into maintaining the edge, all right? I know, not the best of testing, but it's the one that was most realistic I could accomplish out here in the woods. Uh, you're welcome to criticize it because I probably could have come up with something better had I wanted to work on it hard enough. Uh, this was hard enough, okay? So that, that's what I'm gonna say. If you have any comments or questions, put them in the comments section below. I have all the specs and the links for where you, well, actually not the links so much, but the specs, because the links will depend on where you're at uh, in the video description. Until next time, get out and explore. Take that path, let's travel, because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.